America is in a very tough place. Our economy is struggling, the value of our dollar sinking, our debt skyrocketing. We continue to let a mentality of aggression and suspicion interrupt the confidence that we claim to have in our freedom. The only thing bigger than these and many other problems seems to be the fact that America's two major parties, Republicans and Democrats, don't have answers. No matter which party is in power, the problems only get worse. So what if I told you the real problem is with the two-party hold on the election process, and that if we want to fix the biggest issues of our time, we must first correct the primary election system. I'm Ben Swan, and the first step toward truth is to be informed. If you are a mainstream news watcher, you may have never seen this video before. It's from the 2012 Republican primary. This particular scene is from the Missouri State Convention. You see, Republican leadership didn't like the way that Republicans were voting and moved to shut down their convention and change the rules on the spot. That was a pretty wild scene. If you haven't seen it before, then you likely don't know the biggest, mostly untold story of the 2012 election. That this crazy scene where Republican voters were attempting to vote for their candidate were shut out of the process. It didn't happen only one time, and it didn't happen in only one state. This was in Arizona. You can't do that! Uh, any people who know Ben Swan or Alex Jones or any of those guys, uh, maybe let them know about this. In Oklahoma, the lights were turned off, and Republican voters attempted to reconvene the convention in the parking lot. <laughs> over and over across the nation, from one state to another, from one county to another, Republican voters were locked out of their own party's process because party leadership didn't like who they were voting for. In Louisiana, the voters were so angry about the way they were being treated by the leadership of the party, they actually picked up their chairs, turned their backs on an appointed chairman in a convention because the party rules were being violated. Well, when confronted about these issues, the Republican Party took the position that they are a private club and therefore they have the right to change the rules however and whenever they like. Now that is very important. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Now throughout this program, we're going to give you quite a few numbers, but let's start with these. The number two. In the United States, as you know, we have only two major parties, the Republican and the Democratic parties. If you watch most national media, you would think that the country is fairly divided when it comes to politics, that there's almost this cosmic battle between the so-called left and right. In theory, about 50% of the nation is blue, Democrat, and about 50% is red, Republican. But that is not true. In fact, about 40% of voters in the United States now say they are independent voters, not affiliated with either party, including the president of independentvoting.org. I feel very, very strongly that the system is uh, really rigged in the direction of the political parties and uh, I think making membership in a political party a condition for full voting rights is uh, unconstitutional but also totally counter to the spirit of what American democracy is supposed to be about. Well, Jackie isn't alone. Nearly half of all the voters in the United States are not affiliated with either the Republican or the Democratic parties. And yet there are only two options available to them? Well, why is that? Well, much of it comes back to the primary system, a system that has crippled the American electorate. Crippled it how? Well, consider this. In just about any congressional district in the country, you have either a majority of Republican or Democratic voters. Now that happens because of either community values or because of redistricting, where parties will carve out a state to make sure they have an advantage. Within that district, on average, only 9% of voters will take part in a primary election. Now remember, congressional and state legislative districts have been carved and then recarved and then recarved again to make sure the candidates only have to win the primary in order to win the general election. We'll crunch some numbers, and it doesn't take long to figure out that a candidate only has to pull 
a little more than 3% of the vote in a major party's primary in order to win the at-large seat. 3% of the vote in order to represent 100% of the constituency. How is that representative government? Generally speaking, this small segment of the voters are the most partisan voters. And until you have politicians who are accountable to every voter in their district, you're going to end up with partisanship, in the, the same kind of partisanship we have now. Well, that is why Dan and Jackie and representatives from a number of other political organizations have come together to form a new coalition called End Partisanship. We want to end partisanship. The, the, the dominant approach, which has been to regulate campaign finance, is an ineffective and outdated mode of, of reforming politics. So what specifically is in partisanship attempting to do? Well, number one, they believe that the right to vote is fundamental. And that means... Fighting for the rights of all Americans, whether they're in a political party or not, to have full access to the political process. And that second point is very important. Across the nation, both Republicans and Democrats have closed primaries, meaning that you have to be a registered voter within their party to be allowed to vote in a primary. So remember what I told you about 40% of voters being independents. Still others are registered Green Party, Libertarian Party, Constitution Party, Justice Party, etc. Well, that means at least half of all voters are locked out of participating in the primary vote that ultimately decides their representatives. And yet, according to Chad Peace with the Independent Voter Project, that is exactly what is happening. My right to participate in our democracy should not be conditioned I shouldn't have to join a party. Now you might say, tough. If you want to change that, then don't be an independent. Don't be a libertarian or a Green Party member. Join the Republican or the Democratic Party. Make your vote count in the primary. I'm glad you brought that up. Remember the video that we started with? Video that demonstrates what happened in 2012? That is exactly the point. Over two million Republican primary voters attempted to do that in 2012. But state after state, the rules were changed. Sometimes, as I told you, in the middle of a convention. And remember why. Because the Republican Party insisted it could do so, claiming that it is a private club. And this goes to the party's own arguments in court, saying, well, we have the right to tell people they can't vote in our primaries because we're private organizations. So the second cause of action is very simple. If you're a private organization, start acting like one, meaning you shouldn't be accepting taxpayer dollars and the taxpayers shouldn't have to fund primaries if you aren't going to let everybody vote in them. According to a report by IVN, or the Independent Voter Network, taxpayers across the nation spent approximately 400 million, let that number sink in, 400 million dollars to administer party elections in 2012. The study compiled data from nine states, which then projected across the country. The nine states chosen, Texas, New York, North Dakota, Idaho, Tennessee, Indiana, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Rhode Island. So to be clear, only 9% of the population on average is taking part in primary elections that are costing taxpayers $400 million. If the Republican and Democratic parties are private clubs, why aren't they paying for their private primaries themselves? If taxpayers are forced to pay for the primaries, why isn't anyone and everyone allowed to participate? So how to fix this? So we've developed a state-by-state -state legal strategy defending the right of individual independent voters in the courtroom. The state-by-state -state taking on unconstitutional and unlawful control of the political process in partisanship has filed their first lawsuit as a blueprint in New Jersey. Well, why New Jersey? 47.6% of registered voters in that state, nearly one half, are registered in 2013 as unaffiliated voters. And yet, New Jersey requires that a voter affiliate with a political party approved by the state as a precondition to participating in the primary process. The suit seeks to protect the fundamental right to vote under the New Jersey and United States constitutions, which have no requirement that a voter forfeit their First Amendment right not to associate with a political party. By denying over 2.6 million New Jersey voters the right to cast a vote in the primary election, the state has disenfranchised, the lawsuit says, nearly half of its electorate, and thereby given private political parties and partisan voters a greater and unequal access 
to the voting franchise. Additionally, under the New Jersey Constitution, neither the state nor a county may appropriate money for any use of a private association. What the lawsuit is doing is asserting, for the first time, asserting the rights of independent voters, not on behalf of a group, a group whether it's race-based or gender or ideological, it's just as an individual person. I ought to have the same rights as everybody else to have a meaningful vote in the political process. So what you need to know is that a concerted effort to spread the in-partisanship lawsuit to every state in the nation is now underway. But one important point should be made here. You know, this effort is not about ending political parties. It's about protecting the voter and the taxpayer from a scheme that's been put into law by politicians who are answering to party bosses and not the people they claim to represent. This effort is about opening up the political process. After all, wouldn't the Democratic position advocate for an electoral process where the most people have an opportunity to have a meaningful vote? Wouldn't the Republican position have candidates run to represent the people of the district, not members of their party's central committee? Wouldn't the Libertarian position provide the individual with a superior right to ballot access than that of any party? Wouldn't the individual right to vote in our Democratic Republic, for the people and by the people, derive from the individual person? Of course it does, because the founders and framers knew that the individual's rights always trump politics. After all, humanity is greater than politics. Well, this episode is an idea of what we're trying to accomplish as we move forward into season two of the Truth in Media Project. We're going to continue to go after big stories just like this one, traveling around the country, not staying solely in studio. And you can help. Join us with our Indiegogo campaign as we attempt to raise the money to create this second season so that we can place it on YouTube, on Roku, on Hulu Plus, and on Amazon, as well as Benswan.com. You can also go to Benswan.com and there you can get engaged in our process. Help us to fund this season and give us feedback on what we can do, the kinds of stories you want to see, and what we can do better. Remember, Benswan.com, where humanity is greater than politics.